This is Ted Forbes. He runs a really fantastic photography channel here on YouTube, The Art of Photography. Definitely subscribe. I've watched a lot of his videos and he just mentioned that Sony's latest lens release is perhaps one of their most important in the lineup ever. And that's a really big statement. Now this, well, A7S III, which is actually really good for wildlife, specifically video, and it's the 100 to 400 zoom lens. This is a G Master lens and it's an exceptional lens. And it's similar to this new lens that Ted's talking about because it is a zoom lens that would excel in both wildlife and macro. And that's kind of an interesting and weird combination. And it took me a while to really appreciate this new lens by Sony, which literally even on the lens itself, it's got the word macro. And that's really interesting. Now, for a while, I've really been thinking about all the rules in photography and video, like the 180 degree shutter rule. Only when it comes to macro, you have to have one to one mag magnification, magnification, <laughs> which this new lens sort of does. Now, if you look in the description and you read more about the lens, Sony mentions half macro. And I think for that reason, I kind of dismissed it when I first saw this new lens. And furthermore, I've spent a lot of money. All the money is gone on lenses and cameras. But this lens really is special. And when we look at this footage that I literally just captured weeks ago with this lens and this body, well, I can't help but think what the footage would have looked like if I would have used the new lens by Sony, which is a 70 to 200 and features half macro magnification, 0.5 magnification. And that's what I want to dive into and talk a little bit about in this particular video, because for me personally, I think we get so hung up on all these rules and you watch videos and you read books and it's like you can't break these rules and you need one to one magnification. Now, when I got started with macro, I wanted to go extreme macro and I was shooting two times macro photography. I was adding extension tubes and I was really pushing the limits. Now that clip that I showed you with this particular lens, this lens has a magnification of 0.35. And I added an extension tube to get just a little bit closer. Now when you use an extension tube, the longer the focal range, the less magnification you got. So I was probably somewhere around 0 0.4, 0 0.42 maybe. And this new lens, which is a G lens, 70 to 200 millimeters, again, has a magnification of 0.5. Now, take a look at this particular clip, which was filmed on a wide angle lens and with the brand new ZV-E1, which has this incredible feature of autofocus on insects and wildlife and birds. And when you want to photograph wildlife and birds, you can actually set it on a mode that lets you prioritize. And maybe you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Because if I would have shot this particular clip, which is 4K, 120 frames per second, with insect autofocus, the fact that my Sony camera, the ZV-E1, with this lens, which is a wide angle lens, not the lens you want, and yet I was able to track the subject, the butterfly flying around, and I think it looks pretty neat. Now, take it with a grain of salt. This is just on the go. Me and my girlfriend, we're heading to Yellowstone, we're packing up the car, and I gotta take this footage of this butterfly. Now again, this has a magnification of 0.37, and the new lens has a magnification of 0.5. And yet, when I added that teleconverter, I got a pretty beautiful photo. And that's really what I've been thinking about a lot more lately when I think about a really great photo of a bee or an ant, any kind of beautiful insect, macro photography, close-up photography, less worried about the perfect magnification or whether I'm hitting that one-to-one -one reproduction, and more about the frame, the entire scene. What is the story? This picture of a bee, for example, was shot 
that with an old vintage lens, a Helios 422, which is 58 millimeters and has very little magnification. But I added an extension tube and I love the blades of grass and the bee taking off. It's a beautiful photo in my, in, in my opinion. But here's where it gets interesting. You see, this new lens also accepts teleconverters. <laughs> it's so funny because I've been thinking about this new combination, the camera that I'm filming on, ZV-E1, new autofocus, and this lens paired with a teleconverter because then I could leverage both autofocus of insects and I could have even more magnification. But what would happen with this new lens? I would have a magnification that honestly would be absolutely perfect for things like bees, bumblebees, hummingbirds, really small animals where you're able to get fairly close. Think about a cat or a dog or a chipmunk, a bird at the park and you're feeding it popcorn. Let's talk a little bit about f4. If Sony would have went f2.8, it would have been the lens they just released, the G Master f2.8 70 to 200. By going f4, it's lighter, it's smaller, it's less expensive, and they focused on macro. And when you shoot macro, you're not really at 2.8 much of the time. You need more uh, aperture to create just a little bit more focus plane something to think about. But what about only 200 millimeters as a wildlife photographer? Well, I was recently at Yellowstone and I feel like I would have done better if I was shooting these shots with this lens or with a 70 to 200. And the reason why is what I was really wanting to shoot after the fact, what I thought about was environmental shots. I got one or two, but I kept zooming in. And when I did that, I lost this beautiful scene. What makes this scene is the mist burning off as the sun rises over Yellowstone. This is the Yellowstone River and these photos by my girlfriend and this particular photo by myself shot with the Sony A1 at 200 millimeters was good but I think even less zoomed in at 70 or maybe 100 millimeters would have been incredible. You know, if you're new to the channel, for me, it's really all about striving to capture one beautiful photo, one perfect shot, whether it's a cinematic B-roll clip or a photo, if you're into that, consider subscribing. It's really intriguing to me and I'm excited to see where Sony continues to push the envelope with the upcoming Sony A9 release. I want to make a video and talk a little bit more about that. I'll see you on the next one.